Hello everybody. So I was looking for a new controller the past couple months. I came across something called 8-Bit Do and they have all these different controllers. They have this little tiny one called the Zero and it was very appealing to me because I like to be able to travel with my stuff and I was going to be playing on my Android my tablet and my phone so I wanted a controller that could work on everything. I have in my hands the 8-bit to zero controller and yes that is the pronunciation according to their YouTube channel because Nintendo 8-bit do whatever. So this controller I like it. I have to say the D-pad could use a little bit of work. The shoulder buttons took a little getting used to. But other than those two things, I have to say this controller is very good. Those were the negatives I have. Now the positives. The buttons are nice to press. The delay when you hit a button and the character reacts or whatever. No delay, basically. And I tested this. If you've ever played Shovel Knight, you can turn off this option called V-Sync. And an old game like that has no delay. So I used that game to test my PS3 controller and this side by side. Well, first of all, the PS3 controller was wired, so you know it's going to be instant. But the 8-bit do, I had set wirelessly. And what I found was the 8-bit do controller was only one frame later than the PS3 controller, which is really good. Somewhere around 33 milliseconds extra. I didn't do any scientific testing or anything like that, but what I found was something around 60 milliseconds or less with the 8-bit do zero. I have to say this little bitty controller I didn't expect very much, but I was very surprised. It works just as well as my PS3 controller in the delay department. Now of course it is very small. It doesn't have the analog sticks. It doesn't have L2 and R2 and that's something you have to remember. If you're going to be playing games that need that then you can't. Well, it depends. I was able to play Final Fantasy 7 with this controller all the way through. No problems at all. The only issue was I couldn't press L2 or R2 on the, you know, the map area, the overworld. But in this case, that wasn't needed on that game. This little baby controller is about the size of a, mm, a clothespin. I put it side by side with a clothespin, and the clothespin's actually a little bit bigger. And it fits right in the palm of my hand. And this means it's so small that you can literally take it anywhere you want. And I guess you can also attach it onto your keychain, which I've never tried. The strap is a little small for my hand. I have about medium sized hands. I can get it on. The battery life, I've only had to charge this once. So I haven't even charged it twice yet. And when I did charge it, it only took mm, an hour. I think they claim around 18 hours of battery life. I was very shocked that it seems to be true. And that was me using it out of the box. I hadn't charged it when I first got it. I haven't had to charge it since my first charge and I'm very happy with that. The one thing that did bother me is when it did finally die, I couldn't play my game anymore. I had to stop because you can't use it while you're charging it. So that's kind of a bummer. I even tried a couple tricks up my sleeve to trick it into thinking that I can play it while it's charging, but mm, I just couldn't get it to work. Oh well. I'll give you a sample of what the buttons sound like when I press them. This is A, B, X, and Y. Here's start and select. And here's the L and R buttons. Those are clicky. But it depends where you press them. If you press them where you're meant to press them, they're not so clicky. You're supposed to press them toward the middle of the controller, so 
If you get this and you're wondering why the L and R buttons are so hard to press, listen how clicky that is, then just move your fingers a little closer together. There are a few different modes on this controller. You can use it with iOS, you can use it with Android, Windows, and something else. What was it? OS X? I only own PC, I mean Windows and Android, so I don't know how the others are. But everything I've used on four different Android devices, um, everything's worked fine. But something to remember is you can only pair it with one device at a time. And to change that device, you have to hold the select button while it's on. And that'll, de that'll delete the pairing. That way you can repair it with something else. One thing I have not done was test how far of a distance I can walk away with it and still get a good connection. So I'm going to try that really quick. I'll be right back. So I'm amazed because I just took the tablet, put it on one side of the house. I walked around the whole house and nothing had any effect no matter where I went. It still read every single button press. There was no extra delay. I was behind walls. I don't have a big house, but I think that was really good. The whole house. So if you're wondering because this controller is so small, how well does it work? Well, there you go. I was very, very impressed by that. And it's so small, you would think it wouldn't do that well, but it sure did. Now, if you plan to use this on PC, there is a way to convert it to Xbox 360 mode, which is basically the standard on PC these days. And the way you do that is not very obvious. You have to go on their website and you download the XPad app for Windows or Mac OS. And through that, you can click some buttons and get it into Xbox 360 mode and it shows up just like an Xbox controller. So I thought that was pretty cool, but the only thing is you're missing, you know, your two analog sticks and your L2 and R2, but hey, you know, it does it. And you could play games like Shovel Knight, so at least it does it. And hey, you could probably play Skyrim with it and fall out and <laughs> you might not be able to shoot any of your weapons, but you know. Now about the D-pad, I do have a bit of an issue with it. I like how it feels, but it does have the tendency to press diagonal when you're not trying to. So your character on the game you'll be going left and right, and then all of a sudden you'll be crouching and you'll stop moving or things like that. And it's just kind of annoying. To consciously remember to press the button in a certain way, not to go diagonal, well, not the best, but you know, it is very inexpensive and very small and very convenient. So I will live with it personally. But if you're going to be using this for competing or speed runs or anything like that, maybe not the best choice. There might be mods you can do to the D-pad if you take it apart. I've seen some videos on the bigger versions of the controllers of this company that they make, whatever I just said. So there might be a way to modify it a little if you go in there, but I don't know anything about that. If you have any questions, you can leave them down below in the comments. I'll reply as I can. But otherwise, I hope you enjoyed this review and I hope it was helpful. I would personally recommend this controller. Unless you have big hands, then maybe not. Do you have big hands? Well, it might work, but I don't know. You'd have to try it for yourself because I don't have the big hands to try it for you. So, well, anyway. Dang, do your pain in the butt. Why won't you connect? Come on, turn off, turn on.
on, I said. Oh, now my battery's low. Okay, why the heck won't you connect? Oh, no, I shouldn't have to do that. Forget device, pair. There, come on, do it, go. You can do it. You've done it before. What the heck, man? Okay, you know what? Forget device. Turn the blue, turn everything off. Now turn Bluetooth on. Turn the device on. Pair. That ain't it. I'll be so mad if it never, ever connects again. Come on. It did it! Yay! It did it! Yay! It's connected! See? It stays on while it's connected. Ugh! That was pain in the butt! I had to turn off the Bluetooth on the tablet. It might be a tablet issue, actually. I don't know. I don't know.